uh, we'll start. Um, uh, Fadi Shidia, um, welcome to um, this, our interview with the WICU. Um, can you introduce yourself? Who is Fadi Shidia? Thank you. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. Uh, so I'm, my name is Fadi Chidiak. I live in Barcelona for the past 30 years. Uh, I left Lebanon when I was 19, uh, barely out of university, and I went to Montreal, Canada to finish my undergrad and uh, did my master's there. And then I moved to Spain in 93. So I've been living outside Lebanon for 35 years, but like many expats, I'm still very attached to the home country. Very good. Um... Can you um, describe your involvement with uh, Million Bridges? Uh, yes. Um, some university friends and I, um, during the COVID pandemic, during the confinement period, uh, we came together over online and created this company. So university friends from Montreal, from McGill, with the university friends from the American University of Beirut. Uh, you know, we, we've known each other for since we were uh, 18 or 19. And then we got together and we decided to create um, a remittance service to help expats like us wishing to send money to their family in Lebanon um, in a way that was easier and less expensive. So that's how Million Bridges was born. Very good. Um... Uh, how do you open a Million Bridges account, you know, for the uninitiated, if you can describe from the beginning? Uh, so it's very simple. For the sender, all you need is a credit card um, and to access our website or download our app and then um, register as a sender. So what we ask you is your name and last name, uh, date of birth, phone number, email, very standard information. Um, and then uh, we ask you to upload a photo of your ID. And then we ask you to take a selfie uh, of yourself uh, right then and there so we can verify uh, that you're the same person who's registering. So this is what the, um, the financial community calls KYC, know your customer. Um, and this is uh, required by law to make sure that everybody who registers and opens an account with million bridges, um, does it the legal way, but it takes more. It doesn't take more than a few minutes to, you know, to fill the questionnaire. So once you have, um, once you have created an account, uh, how do you go ahead and then send money to Lebanon? Um, again, you you only need to use your credit card. So once we uh, we've cleared you uh, to use million bridges, meaning once you've passed KYC. Um, and this normally takes between one uh, hour to 24 hours, depending on what kind of document you've uploaded. And if the selfie is correct or, you know, if there's a mistake anywhere, uh, we contact you and we tell you to redo it. But otherwise, it doesn't take more than an hour to clear uh, the KYC screening. After that, we let you know that you, you've passed KYC and then you can just access the, your login again and you enter your credit card details, and then you select uh, who, you, who you want your beneficiary or beneficiaries to be. Um, let's say you want to send money to um, a mom in Lebanon. So you enter her name, last name, um, date of birth, your relationship, um, and then uh, her phone number, her cell phone number. And that's the only information that we need about your beneficiary so that we can uh, get them the money uh, as fast as possible. You just need to give us their name, last name, and uh, their phone number, basically. Oh, great. Um, why should I, if I were a user, how, why should I use Million Bridges uh, over other companies that do the same thing? Actually, nobody does anything uh, similar to Million Bridges. We're unique in the service that we provide because everybody that you know, all the traditional services, uh, what they do is they send money from A to B. Uh, so you're in uh, Montreal and you want to send money to Beirut. They take that money and they, and they channel it to Beirut and that's it. That's all they do. Uh, 
uh, we don't we do a lot more than that. We help create an account for the beneficiary in a European payment entity or bank so that that money is always safe outside uh, the Lebanese banking system. It's in the European banking system. And when once that account is created, the beneficiary has three choices. They can either keep it there safe, uh, withdraw all or some of it. That's also something that nobody else offers. They don't have to withdraw all the money that was sent to them. They can decide, you know, if I received $500, I only need 100 today. I don't want to keep the rest in my pocket or under my pillow where it's not safe. So I just withdraw 100 today. Um, they can cash it out at no cost. A lot of these companies that you mentioned take 2% commission from the beneficiaries. We take 0% from the beneficiaries. So if you send them 500, they receive 500. And last but not least, we have agreements with about 90% of the supermarkets in Lebanon so that our beneficiaries, when they purchase, when they spend uh, with Million Bridges, when they make the payment with their Million Bridges account, they earn ex extra privileges that are only reserved for those beneficiaries. And those, be and those privileges can be extra loyalty points or discounts or gifts with purchase. Um, there's a host of promotions that we offer exclusively only for our uh, beneficiaries. Great. Um, you mentioned that the money is actually kept uh, yes. outside Lebanon. Um, does this create a tax obligation on the recipient? No, actually the money um, is held in custody, if you like, in a European bank. And this is the reason why we are able to offer the service because recently the European Union um, deregulated, uh, if you like, the banking industry in in, um, in Europe about five years ago. And they allowed companies that are called today fintechs to open accounts, uh, temporary accounts for beneficiaries and for senders. Um, those are transitory accounts that are used to make payments and to hold the money for a limited time, uh, but they carry no tax obligations. Mm -hmm. uh, what will it cost uh, to use a million bridges for a user sending money? So sending money, we take a flat 4.9% uh, on the sender. We don't take any money from the beneficiary. So let's say you want to send $100, we will charge you 104.9, but we will take a uh, hundred dollars and give them complete those hundred dollars complete to your beneficiaries to your beneficiary also we do not um, participate in any foreign exchange for the, the, the money that you're sending if, meaning if you want to uh, send dollars but you are um, in Canada or Australia or Mexico or you're using euros we are not the ones who convert your currency to dollars. It's your bank who does that because all these um, traditional companies like Western Union, MoneyGram, RIA, uh, most of their margin comes from um, the exchange rate, uh, the you know, not so advantageous, this exchange rate that they apply when they convert your money from your own currency, currency to US dollars. We don't do that. So it's 4.9% and that's it. Okay. Um, also, um, will you be offering discount for WLCU users? Yes, of course. So, for uh, only for WLCU users, uh, we've uh, negotiated um, a very nice account, a discount that will be uh, announced, I assume, via your newsletter, and it will be a promo code that you're going to apply that the sender can apply. Um, after registering, when they make their first payment, when they apply this promo code, they will get a discount on um, a permanent discount on uh, this 4.9% fee to be to be decided. Yes. Um, so let's say we created the account, you've done the KYC due diligence and everything is ready to go. And I press send to send money. How long does it take from uh, from when I press send until the money is available in Lebanon? It takes one or two seconds, not more than that. So the money is received uh, through your credit card company. The money is received in Spain. 
and stays in Spain, like we said before. And then in real time, we send your beneficiary an SMS notification telling them that they have received $500 from their family member in, let's say, in Montreal. Um, and this happens in one or two seconds. As soon as you press send, they receive the SMS. And then they have the liberty to go and spend the money whenever they want. Um, they have 90 days to spend the money. If they don't, you know, if they don't uh, respond to the SMS or if they um, ignore the message or leave the account unused for 90 days, the money goes back to the sender. Uh, but if they use one dollar $1 out of the 500, then they gain another 90 days. Or if they use the second dollar, then they gain another 90 days. So as long as they're moving the money, they're, they're okay. Okay, so they get a text message uh, that they have money ready to be uh, retrieved. What happens next? Um, if they then they have two choices: either they can withdraw that money in U.S. dollars, or they can go spend it at our participating supermarkets. So if they decide to withdraw the money in dollars, they go to our participating cash out partners. Today it's Wish Money. Um, very soon we're adding Cash United. And in the first quarter of 2024, we're adding the ATMs of Kediri Bane and Bank Med. So we will have the largest cash out network in Lebanon. Um, and the way to withdraw money today is very easy. Um, all, all the beneficiary has to do is go to the cash out uh, location with uh, his or her cell phone and ID. Uh, once they approach the, you know, the cash out uh, clerk, they say, I, I've received $500 from uh, through Million Bridges. I would like to cash it out totally or, or partially. It's up to the beneficiary to decide. Um, and then so the, the clerk will ask that beneficiary for his or her phone number, enter that number into the system. The system sends in uh, a one-time password uh, called OTP to uh, the beneficiary's cell phone, uh, for example, 5318. The beneficiary says, I received a code that says 5318. The clerk enters that code in his system and the transaction is done and he hands them, uh, he hands over the $500 and that's it. Of course, if he, uh, to do the job 100% uh, legally, they have to verify that that person that came in has a valid ID and is the same person as the owner of the of the phone number. Um, but you know we know that this is done all the time, so there's no worry. So for the user receiving the money, all they need is a a, a phone. Uh, how about the merchant? What what do the merchant need to complete the transaction? Um, so the the person that was that is withdrawing cash, they need their phone and an ID. But if they go to a supermarket, they only need the phone because supermarkets don't require ID uh, because they're buying food; they're not withdrawing cash. So all you need is your phone if you go to a supermarket. So you can be standing at the checkout line and remember, oh, I forgot I don't have money in my pocket, but I have money with Million Bridges. So you approach the cash out, uh, I mean, the, the cashier, and you say, I want to pay with Million Bridges. And the same process happens. They take your phone number, they enter it into their system. That sends you a message uh, with the code. So you communicate the code to the cashier. The cashier enters it and the and the transaction is done and you can take what whatever you bought your groceries and go home and you don't even need your wallet or or cash or anything just your phone um i guess you already answered this question how easily people can use the money they receive so it's either you can they can cash it or they can go to the super participating supermarket and then they use it to buy just using their phone Yes, you can you can you can do both. You can decide to withdraw all the money. You can withdraw part of it, leave the rest safe in a European bank. You don't have to worry about, you know, if something happens, uh, there's another crisis. You know, will I access my money? Your money is safe in a European bank, and you can access it anytime you want at no cost. So you can decide. You know, I my son sent me five hundred dollars, but I only need a hundred today, so I will go and withdraw a hundred. Instead of keeping it in my pocket or or at home, uh, where it's not safe, uh, either place it's not safe. But it's safe in a in a European bank. 
uh, or you can cash it out or you can spend it. So you can you can do all three options. Awesome. Um, are you aware of uses where people are getting paid uh, through a million bridges, you know, for professional work? Um, this is this is a new service that we launched about a week ago. So we realized that Lebanon is actually one of the countries that has the most um, freelancers or remote workers um, working for European and non-European companies uh, because the salaries are more competitive. And, um, you know, with digital technology today, you can be anywhere and, you know, doing IT or graphic graphic design or any kind of uh, freelance type of work. So today when they get paid in their uh, bank accounts, they have to first they, they need what they call the fresh US dollar account. And this comes with a monthly fee. Uh, whenever you transfer money to that account, the bank will take um, a fixed fee, 20 to $25. Then they take a percentage of that amount that came in between 0 0.5 to 1%. And then every time you withdraw that cash through an ATM, you're charged uh, again, um, 0.5 to 1%. Um, and then there's a limit on the amount that you can charge per day. So it's quite complicated to today to do this through a bank. Whereas with us, there, there's no limits. You can go and withdraw the money at no cost um, and decide to keep, you know, if I've been paid $3,000 for some IT work that I did for a company in Europe, I don't want all of them in my pocket. I will withdraw 200 a day and leave the rest safe in the European bank. And it doesn't cost me anything. I don't need to have a bank account um, at all. Yeah. No. Great. Um, I think you mentioned that money not used is returned at some point. Um, money not used for 90 days uh, consecutively is returned to the sender. But as long as you're moving the money, um, if you, you know, today you withdraw 20, the next day you receive another 100, and then a week later you withdraw 50. So you're gaining 90 days every time. Uh, so nine, the 90 day rule, uh, which is a law in Europe, only applies if you leave your account untouched for 90 consecutive days. Yep. And at that point, you close the temporary account. Um, at that point, the money returns to the sender and you know the sender can try again and then go through the same process again. Uh, the only inconvenience is that you know they will lose the commission that they paid the first time. Yep. And they have to go through the KYC again? No, once you're KYC, you're fine. But you know, you have to pay 4.9% again to send the money if you your beneficiary waited too long to use it. That's the only inconvenience. Is that a minimum how much someone can send? Uh the minimum is ten dollars and the maximum per month is three thousand. Uh the maximum per transaction is one thousand. Um, and the maximum per year, according to European law, is thirty thousand dollars. Does uh, either the sender or recipient have a, a way to track activity and uh, balance and this sort of thing? Yes. Um, today, the sender has an app that they can, uh, you know, once they download the app with their phone, they can check the transactions. How much money they they've sent, who they've sent it to, um, how many beneficiaries they have, etc. They can, if they don't have an app, they can do the same. They can obtain the same information on our website, and very soon, hopefully within you know within the next week or ten days, we are introducing an app for the beneficiaries as well, so they can uh, track their how much you know how much money I still have in Europe, how much did I spend, where did I spend it in case I forgot. And uh, the lists for more information with respect to our merchant database, um, the locations where we can, where beneficiaries can cash out, all that information will be on the app. Yeah. Um, why are you based in Spain? Um, we could be based in any European country because the um, the law that we are, the laws that we are following, uh, or better said, the banking norms that we are following 
uh, which are the payment services directive number two, and for short, it's PSD2, um, are applicable in all 27 European countries. So we can be in Cyprus, or we can be in uh, Sweden, or we can be in Spain. We're in Spain because you know, I live in Spain, and um, the company was created here, uh, like I said, during the pandemic. Um, all my other partners are living outside of Europe, so we have uh, partners in Canada, the UK, Mexico, and Lebanon, and the UAE. So because I was the only one living in, in the jurisdiction of the European Union, we decided to base the company in Barcelona. Great. Um, do you only send to Lebanon, or we have other countries? Today, Million Bridges was created um, to help expats from all countries channel remittances to their families back home uh, but we have chosen to pilot in Lebanon because most of us are Lebanese uh, not all of us as I said we have Mexican Canadian and British partners uh, most of us are Lebanese so we decided that the pilot market would be Lebanon but we have our eyes on Egypt for 2024 uh, Bangladesh uh, Nigeria uh, Pakistan for 2025 and onwards. Uh, these are markets that have a very large expat base and the remittance volumes is much larger than Lebanon. But again, we would like to pilot in Lebanon uh, just because we're uh, closest to that market. Yep. Um, how did you get uh, the name Million Bridges? Uh, how did you come up with the name? Uh, I mean, it it's uh, it's a play on the fact that there's four or five million Lebanese in Lebanon and millions more outside. I don't know, some numbers say eight, some numbers say 13. I'm not sure what the real number is. Uh, so all these millions of expats outside um, somehow reaching out from where they from where they are to help family back home to help the country indirectly with the inflows of um, hard currency. So that the, the name came from those bridges that are being built uh, every day with expats sending money and reaching out to, to help the country. So that's how Million Bridges was was conceived. Oh, and Khazni Beljaybe. Khazni Beljaybe, uh, the vault in your pocket, is a reference to the fact that your money is really in a safe, but in Europe. So it's as if the safe was in your pocket, a virtual safe, um, but you really don't need to carry it, uh, carry the cash in your pocket. It's as if you have a, a safe um, where the money is secure, uh, but you can access it anytime as, and it's as close to you as your pocket. Um, because your phone, normally you keep it in your pocket, so. Um, how do you compare to other similar services? Um, is it just a cost issue or there is other differentiator? Um, well, I mean, the main differentiator is the fact that we keep your money in Europe. And in countries like Lebanon or Egypt or Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nigeria, where the banking system is not very stable and anything can happen and there's there can be um you know currency restrictions or capital outflow restrictions like what happened in lebanon in 2019 um so all of a sudden you're you you can't access your money anymore whereas if your money is in the european banking system you know this virtually is virtually impossible for for anything to happen to your money it's safer it's more secure and it's always accessible to you. Um, so we felt that uh, the European banking norms, PSD2, um, are very helpful to these markets that suffer from this banking instability. Yeah. Um, uh, is it conceivable that somebody might say to a recipient, I'll give you your money if you give me XYZ percent? Uh, could that happen? Um, I mean, if you if you want to withdraw money in US dollars at any cash out location, you have to present your phone and your ID. If those two things don't match, you, you won't be given those dollars. Um, so, I mean, there's a double layer of security. There's your phone, 
where you have to receive the um, the code it can only be sent to your phone uh, so somebody has to steal your phone unlock it uh, know that you are a million bridges beneficiary and somehow have access to your id and look like you <laughs> so that they can uh, you know that so that they can take your money uh, uh, you know or steal your money it's it's not impossible but it's very highly unlikely that all these factors would come together what if uh, a merchant um, wanted to take a fee from the recipient? Uh, they couldn't because we pay the merchant in Spain into their account, which is also held in Spain. So the transaction that happens in Lebanon is mirrored in Spain. Uh, so when, when uh, you pick up your groceries and leave, um, the merchant hasn't seen any money yet. They rely on the fact that in real time, a few seconds later, we deliver that money to their account in Europe. And so we decide how much commission they can charge or how much commission they can make um, because you know that's under our control yeah. through our platform in Spain. Do you have a mechanism for reporting abuse? Let's say merchant abuse. Uh, yes, I mean, we have a team in Lebanon on the ground, we have a hotline uh, and an email account, and we have a team uh, for IT, for customer support, tech support, um, merchant support, that people can call and say, you know, if the merchant is uh, acting, um, you know, in a way that's not convenient or, or agreed to with us, they can report that abuse and then we will take action. Yeah. Um, is there any law in Lebanon that could affect the service or a future law that somebody might conceive to um, step in the middle and, uh, you know, make um, we've been we've been cleared by uh, the various departments at the central bank, the legal department, the payment services department and the oversight committee, uh, because our system is 100% uh, legal and follows European banking norms. And our cash out partners in Lebanon follow Lebanese banking norms. Um, and Million Bridges, per se, does not have access to anybody's accounts. So we don't have access to the sender accounts or to the beneficiary's money or to the merchant or the cash out partner. We uh, limit ourselves to the flow of data and, uh, and the information, and the process, if you like. Um, and the instructions, but we don't have access to the money. Uh, so um, our system has been cleared by the regulators in both in Spain and in Lebanon. Um, and as long as the transactions at the merchant level are being declared at the at the cash register, so there's uh, nothing is being done under the table because everything is being declared. So Lebanon is receiving those VAT uh, payments. And when the dollars are being given to a beneficiary by a cash out partner, that's being recorded uh, and um, against the idea, the, the identification document that that person presented. So everything is meticulously recorded and all the corresponding taxes are being paid to the Lebanese authorities. That's why we feel 100% safe that our system is uh, legal and, um, and compliant. Uh, do you have a future plans that you can share with us for the company? Um, so aside from um, entering new markets, which is our main focus for 2024, um, our next a uh, big project is actually allowing people to cash out through bank ATMs so that you don't have to rely on uh, cash out, uh, physical cash out locations being open or, you know, over the weekend, or if maybe you need cash during the night, you can approach um, any ATM and go through the same process, enter the OTP yourself, um, and then withdraw money from in US dollars from multiple uh, ATMs. Um, we also have future plans to expand our service uh, through merchants, um, go beyond supermarkets. Uh, we have a burgeoning uh, agreement, uh, let's say, network of pharmacies 
Uh, we also have some clothing stores, toy stores, baby nursery stores. Uh, today, most of our merchants are supermarkets because we focused on food. It's the most important thing. But in the future, we will be expanding into you know all kinds of uh, of stores, uh, retail locations. Let's say. Thanks. Um, you may be aware that WSU has five main languages: uh, French, English, Portuguese, Spanish, and Arabic. Have you thought of um, what to call the service in other languages? Um, today, uh, I mean, the short answer today is, is no, because we're, we we are choosing one language to go with, and today it's Arabic, uh, because a lot of our communication is aimed at the beneficiary in Lebanon, so that the beneficiary can tell their corresponding sender, listen, I know you've been sending, in, sending me money through that service, but I just found out about Million Bridges, and they have all these new um, features. Please use Million Bridges from now on. Uh, so that's why we are keep it, keeping it in Arabic. That doesn't mean in the future when we have hopefully our website, which is today only in English, uh, can have various uh, other versions, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, English, and French to reflect a bit of uh, you know, uh, where the Lebanese diaspora is dispersed. Uh, then in that case, yes, we will have uh, a slogan per language. Okay, so when we, we're gonna be translating this um, interview into the languages I mentioned, um, how would you like me to um, uh, write the name of Million Bridges? Do you want me to use the English or the Arabic? Or uh, you bear in mind that some people in the diaspora, they don't read Arabic. Um, Exactly. So, I mean, the, the company name uh, is Million Bridges, and that's a trademark, so that will stay in Million Bridges. Uh, but we can uh, suggest in English, a uh, vault in your pocket, uh, in French, un coffre dans la poche, and in Spanish, una caja fuerte en el bolsillo, and in Portuguese, un cofre no se o bolso. Uh, and I'm happy to share those with you in writing for, you know, whenever you decide to send your newsletter with the with the translations. Perfect, awesome. Yeah, if you could send it an email that helped me uh, from making mistakes, translation of mistakes. Um, uh, okay, so we spoke about this before the interview and uh, there's been um, a message being shared on WhatsApp that is quite defamatory to a company in Lebanon. Uh, I'm yes. not gonna the company name but if you could just explain a little bit the background to this and and uh, what should what's the take away from it uh yes i mean this has happened before to other companies that operate within the same uh, sector um as you know cash is always a sensitive uh, uh, segment of the market and there's sometimes there's legal sometimes there's uh, um unlawful competition that people who try to slander other competitors uh, through videos that are put together in a very haphazard way without checking sources. Um, if you look at the video, you will see that nobody is claiming credit for that video. Uh, it's not signed by anybody. It wasn't picked up by any uh, news channel or TV station um, or social media. It was only on circulated through WhatsApp which is a dubious um, you know, channel to, to verify uh, news. Um, but the fact that it doesn't say where, the, where that information came from, it's just hearsay. Um, and we know a lot about uh, uh, the, the market segment because we've been dealing with it for the past three years. And I can assure you that if there is a headache uh, in in this uh, you know in this kind of work, it's because of the over regulation and over protection for the consumers and uh, the scrutiny that the central bank, both in Lebanon and in Spain, um, applies on anything related to cash. Any cash transfer that uh, has to uh, leave the country of origin with the first name and last name of the sender and has to arrive to the country of destination with the first name and last name of the beneficiary so that 
at any point in time, any regulator, be it in Spain or Lebanon, can track that payment and find out when was this amount given, uh, who sent it, who received it, who cashed it out, and who intervened in this transaction. And all this information can be accessed by any regulator at any time. So to bring out, I mean, to publish a video saying this is unregulated, it's it's completely untrue. Um, it's over-regulated, if you like. And this is something that we have to work through uh, every day. When the, the amount of information we have to submit to the central bank every time we introduce a new feature or the amount of information we have to submit to our bank in Spain every time we onboard a cash out partner or an NGO or a merchant, um, it's, it's uh, staggering. I mean, we have to translate documents to Spanish, having have them legalized by the Spanish embassy, uh, deliver everybody's passport uh, pages, uh, affidavits from the local banks. It's very, very well uh, you know, uh, controlled and it's very secure. Awesome. Um, is there anything, we were at the end of the interview, so um, is there anything I haven't covered that you would like to uh, mention? Um, I mean, I know Million Bridges is a new name in the remittance business. Um, a lot of people don't know us yet, um, but I just wanted to say that it's completely safe because Million Bridges is only acts as the, um, uh, workflow platform, we channel data from one side to the other, but we don't have access to the cash. Um, and the cash is always safe uh, in the European banking system, and it's regulated by the European banking norms. So even if you don't know us, you haven't heard of us, um, I'm talking to the Lebanese expat, feel safe to work with Million Bridges because it's it operates under the safety and security of the European banking system. Great. Um, do you have any questions for me before we close? Uh, I think we covered in 36 minutes of this interview, I think we covered uh, almost everything that, that, that I can think of. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Fadi, and uh, looking forward. Pleasure. Nice. <laughs> collaborative um, uh, interaction and uh, if you see something that we can make better uh, let us know uh, I know you signed up to the, our app so thank you for yes. doing that and I'm looking forward to um, establishing uh, a WLCU uh, National Council in Spain at some point so maybe you can help us with that as well it would be my pleasure all right God, God Eddie yeah, I'll uh, cover most of the questions, but um, you said we can, we have to use a credit card. Can we use a debit card or a checking account? Um, checking account for sure, no. Debit card, it depends on the bank and what kind of uh, security filters they place on the on the holder of the card before issuing that card. There are some cards, especially in the US, we know that there are some cards that are issued uh, without any KYC and those cards are refused always. Uh, so as long as the bank that's issued the card, whether it be debit or credit, has performed some kind of KYC on the, on the holder of the card, then it's okay. So the credit card can be like American Express or Discover or all kind of credit cards? Yes, it can be any credit card uh, whose issuer um, places KYC uh, filters on the on the holder, let's say. So that's, that's what's important to us. More than the kind of card is does the bank that issued the card know who they gave it to? So... That's why uh, gift cards and um, anonymous cards, those we can't work out. We cannot work with. And the limit is uh, per uh, sender or per uh, beneficiary? You said it's like 3,000 uh, per month, right? It's 3,000 per month per sender. This is a self-imposed limit. We, uh, we impose this limit on ourselves to avoid uh, the platform being used for, you know, uh, people wanting to um, circumvent some kind of uh, banking uh, uh, 
let's say uh, restriction um so this is thought this is the idea behind million bridges is expats helping family uh back home for daily purchases and food and rent and uh, services this is not meant as a uh, money transfer uh, option uh, so 3000 seemed to us like a reasonable limit uh, per month per sender and we also have limits on how many beneficiaries a sender can have and how many senders a beneficiary can have also uh, these are self-imposed to help us as well to avoid any kind of uh, foul play with the platform and how how safe is our information um, so because we are a European company, we follow uh, the European data protection laws and uh, the database where all this information is stored is in Cyprus. Um, so also under European uh, norms um, in data centers that are certified by Microsoft uh, against any kind of hacking or you know intrusion. So it's as safe as it would be with any European company. Okay, thank you. I don't know if you talk about the fees. There's any fees uh, for the sender or no? Uh, yes, the normal fees for senders is 4.9%. Uh, but for all WLCU members, there will be um, a special promo deal, uh, a permanent promo deal that they can uh, access by introducing the promo code um, in the appropriate uh, box. And this is something we'll communicate to you and write. Okay, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Adi, for your questions. Thank you, uh, Fadi. And it was a great meeting with you and uh, you sharing with us all this information and um, looking forward to future collaboration. A pleasure. Thank you for your time and for your interest in Million Bridges. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.